Inkscape is an incredible piece of software that I've been using for over a decade to create designs for myself and my clients. As much as I love Inkscape though, there's one particular problem it has that I'll be addressing in this video, and I'll also be going over some solutions for working around it as well. This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in this video I'll be discussing how you can work around Inkscape's inability to generate files with the CMYK color profile. And if you'd like to learn more about how Inkscape works, be sure to check out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over every tool and feature in Inkscape, and I explain what it is and demonstrate how it works. I'll have a link in the description of the video if you want to check that out. So one of the biggest downsides of working with Inkscape is its inability to generate files with a CMYK color profile. This is problematic when designing things for print because the only colors that can be generated with ink are colors that are within the CMYK color space. Inkscape, by default, works within the RGB color space. These are colors that are generated using light and are intended for use on screens and other electronics with digital displays. Because of that, the RGB color space has a wider range of colors to work with than CMYK does, because light can be used to generate more colors than ink can. So if you create a design with Inkscape, then you go to print it, chances are you're going to be using colors that are out of gamut, or in other words, not within the range of what can be created with ink. Most print shops will refuse to print your document if this is the case, because they know that you're not going to be happy with the result. Now, you may think to yourself, okay, I'll just use colors that are within the CMYK color space, then it should be fine, right? Well, not exactly. It's a little more complicated than just using CMYK colors. Every document has a color profile embedded within it, and if you created that document with Inkscape, then it's going to have an RGB profile because that's the only format Inkscape supports. The problem with printing an RGB document is that you're taking colors that were originally generated using light and trying to reproduce them with ink. This usually results in your finished, printed product having colors that look dull and muddy and just overall different than they did on your screen when you designed them, even if you made sure to only use colors that were within the CMYK color space. It's just not possible for something to look the same in print as it does on your screen if you're creating it in an RGB color profile. And because of that, a lot of print shops will immediately turn down your document if they see that it has an RGB profile embedded. Now, some print shops will do a spot conversion and adjust the colors for you. This is actually becoming a lot more common, and a good example of this would be Vistaprint. I've printed RGB documents with them in the past, and the results were actually pretty good, but they weren't perfect. The best way to ensure that your design will look the same in print as it does on your device is to make sure that your document is using a CMYK color profile. In Illustrator, this can be done by going to File, Document Color Mode, and choosing CMYK Color. In Affinity Designer, this can be done by going to File, Document Setup, clicking on the Color tab, and choosing CMYK from the Color Format dropdown. Inkscape, however, lacks the ability to do this, and it's one of the biggest downsides of working with it in my opinion. Designing things for print is just going to be more challenging in Inkscape, but it's not impossible. There are some workarounds for creating a CMYK document from your Inkscape designs, and I'd like to share some of them with you in this video. Now, I must warn you in advance that these methods are far from perfect, but they will get the job done, and they are better than nothing. If you're a Linux user, there's a third-party extension that you can install for Inkscape that will allow you to export PDF documents with a CMYK color profile. The extension is called Export PDF CMYK, and I'll have a link in the description for those of you who are Linux users and want to try it out. I haven't tried it myself, but I've heard good things. The benefit of using something like this is that it allows you to export your design in an editable vector format where you can manually adjust the DPI, which is also important for printing documents. The downside, though, is that you can only export a PDF document. So if your print shop requires a rasterized format like JPG or TIF, you're out of luck. The other downside is that it's only for Linux users, so those of us on Windows and Mac are also out of luck. Scribus is an open source application for desktop publishing, similar to Adobe InDesign, and it's available for all three operating systems. One great thing about Scribus is that it allows you to open PDF documents that were originally created with Inkscape and manually change the colors based on a CMYK color profile. 
Then, once you're done, you can export your design as a PDF document, and you will now have a print-ready document with a CMYK color profile embedded. I made an entire tutorial about how to do this a few years ago if you want to check that out. I'll have it linked in the description of the video. Much like the Linux extension, the upside of using Scribus is that you can get an editable vector format that most print shops overwhelmingly accept. The downside, though, is that this only works on pure vector pads. If your design uses a lot of Inkscape-specific features like Gaussian blurs, masking, clipped objects, filters, and so on, they're not going to translate over to Scribus, unfortunately. In that case, you'll have to generate a rasterized PNG file and use a different solution. Krita is an open-source design application that functions sort of like a hybrid between Inkscape and GIMP. It allows you to work with and create vector objects, but it also allows you to paint and manipulate images as well. One major benefit of using Krita is that it has the ability to export CMYK documents already built in. There is a catch, though. You won't be able to export your design in a vector format like SVG or PDF. Krita does allow you to export in these formats, but unfortunately your document will be forced into having an RGB color profile. Krita is ideal if you need a flattened raster format like PNG, JPG, and TIF. Those formats can be exported with the CMYK color profile. To do so, first, export your design from Inkscape as a PNG file, then open it up with Krita. Then, navigate to Image, Properties, and under the Image Color Space tab, select the CMYK option from the Model dropdown. From there, you can export your design in any raster format, and it will have a print-ready CMYK color profile embedded. Another way that you can convert your Inkscape document to CMYK is to use a web-based color conversion service. There's a lot of them out there, but the one I'm most familiar with would be RGB2CMYK.org. This allows you to take a PNG file that you exported from Inkscape and convert it to either JPG or TIF format with the CMYK color profile embedded. The benefit of using a site like this is that it's quick and convenient, and you won't have to download any additional software. The downside, though, is that you're limited to only those two formats. And another problem I've noticed with web-based converters like this is that they tend to produce inconsistent results, and you don't get to see how the final design looks before saving it. I've had instances where the final design looked so different from the original in terms of color that it was hardly usable. The final solution for generating a CMYK document from your Inkscape design is to simply save it as an SVG file, then open it up with Illustrator or Affinity Designer and correct the colors yourself. Personally, I think this is the best way to approach the CMYK problem as an Inkscape user because it gives you the most control. With all of the other methods I discussed, you're basically just taking your document and swapping out the color profile without ever having an opportunity to correct your colors once they've been converted. Illustrator allows you to do that, though, and I have an entire tutorial about converting RGB colors to CMYK while maintaining their vibrance on my other channel if you want to check that out. I'll have that linked in the description as well. This is actually what I do myself. Since Inkscape is the software I'm most familiar with, it's what I use for most of my design work, and that does include designs that are made for print. Once I'm finished creating my design in Inkscape, I simply open it up with Illustrator, set the color mode to CMYK, adjust the colors as needed, and then export it to whatever format I'd like. And that's another benefit of using this approach. You're not confined to just PDF or just JPG. You can save your work in any format imaginable, and it'll have a CMYK color profile embedded. You can even save your work directly as an Illustrator file, which, believe it or not, some print shops do require. The same can be done with Affinity Designer as well. Just open your Inkscape SVG, change the document color mode to CMYK, adjust your colors as needed, then save your work to whatever format you'd like. I understand that these two applications are not free, and because of that, this may not be a feasible option for some of you. Until Inkscape implements some kind of support for CMYK, this is the best option we have, and I would highly recommend it if you are in a position to acquire one of these two programs. If not, then any of the other methods that were discussed in this video should work just fine. That should do it for today's video. If you have any questions, leave a comment below, and as always, thanks for watching.